Oi, you know what time it is. You're tuned in listening to the Dry That Aussie Metal Guy. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his content when it drops. And remember, stay brutal, you mad dogs. Roof. G'day, legends. How the hell are you going? It's Dry That Aussie Metal Guy here with Crank.com and with that metalstation.com. So today, tonight, wherever you are in the world, there's great pleasure that I'm having a chat with Glenn Morgan from UK Prog Metal Legends Threshold, who are due to release their 12th studio album, Dividing Lines, 18th of November through Nuclear Blast. Glenn, Cheers for joining me, man. Thank you for having us on. Looking forward to it. Uh, absolute pleasure, man. It's um, good to get the chat with you guys. You have had quite the distinguished career as well, um, forming back in 1988, pardon me, um, five years since the Legends um, of the Shires album, which was your album back as well. How's it been for you, man, the last few years? Yeah, I mean... You know, it was a it was a bolt out of the blue to get the call, and it was amazing when the when I heard the stuff. Uh, oh, which singer would it, who would have turned that down? And the whole process and getting back out alive, we just managed to play that many shows. It, it lasted. I think we were having that much a good time. That's sort of why the next album took so long in a way. Obviously, there was the spanner in the works that everybody knows about, so we don't have to mention. But I've got to admit, from the bottom of my heart, I've had an absolute blast. Um, yeah. It's been a crazy, crazy time for you. That Legends of the Shires was really, really well received. And for you coming back after all that time as well and making that album and then it being so well received and so many doors opening in all these countries as well, it would have really been encouraging for you as well. Oh, absolutely. Um the first time, you know, the first round with Threshold and then stuff I did with my own band, Mindfeed, after we never really sort of got out of Europe, the basic Europe. So to spread out to get to America, Canada, um, 70,000 tons of metal is just, well, unbelievable. I mean, I would have never have dreamt that in a million years. And then, so we obviously, we were meant to come to Australia and then wish we were all absolutely couldn't wait and uh, let's hope we can get that arranged again somehow we've all got our fingers crossed but uh, as yet nothing in the pipeline well I know that's on the cards for you because even with the, the emails and the promo I was getting it did have a note in there going Australia was unfortunately cancelled we we're so excited about getting over there and yeah. um, we're hoping to do it with this new touring cycle, um, hopefully next year at some stage. Can we jump into the kind of the songwriting process for this? I'm pretty keen to to find a little out a little bit more about the song process, songwriting process on this album for you. Yeah. For me, I was actually asked if I wanted, you know, would contribute. And God, you know, that was a bit, you know, I'm bloody chuffed about that. So um, I'd got some a couple of ideas that were already banging around. I've, I've not been sitting on my laurels all these years. Yeah, I'm... I've done quite a bit of stuff with different people that just does that hasn't come to light. So basically, yeah, I've got a couple of basic ideas. Um, and then one of the tracks was completely written. Like I'd, I thought, I've got to write a song for Threshold and Let It Burn is that track on this album. King of Nothing, that's been knocking around for a long time, but I changed that and changed that. I worked on that for weeks to get it how I wanted it to sound on this album. You know, as a threshold song, you know, um, rather than how I may have done it if it was my own album. So okay. um, for me, the process was, yeah, we had sort of um, lyrically, we, we, this was never going to be a concept album, no. um, but it needs to some cohesion. So, you know, there was sort of this, um, we had this idea of perhaps revisiting like Subsurface 2004, that sort of feel and vibe, um, lyrically, not necessarily political, but there's undertones and, and stuff like that. So, the lyrics, my mind personally aren't that political because I'm not a big fan of writing polit anything political, but they sort of have... Um, I think they they sit well within the album, you know, as well. You know, it it worked. They work. Yeah, and it was the second single to come off that. It must have been. You must have been pretty rightly chuffed to kind of have that one as the second single following oh, on of... from the the first one, um, being the silenced one as well. 
Yeah, I had no idea. And then um, it came out of the blue and I'm, well, yeah, that was, yeah. What can I say? Absolutely made my, I can't say day. <laughs> you know, made this year, made this couple of years. Made the whole thing worthwhile, the, you know, the downtime and all that. Yeah, well, I know this was something that she's kind of started kind of working on back in 2020. So it's kind of been a long process. I think I read somewhere you were kind of finished back around January, I think, handed the album up. And, you know, I bet you're glad that it's finally going to come out and see the light of day. Everyone kind of gets their ears around that on 18th of November. And I've had to listen to it, man. I'm digging the absolute bloody hell out of it, eh? Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I, we, we all can't wait. Yeah, the first... Demo, I think, was sort of passed around. Carl's track was October 2020. Um, so the writer went on then, and then I think I recorded my vocals at the end of the summer because originally I thought the date for the deadline was October. Yeah. And then everything just got pushed back and back and back. So I think we eased off a little bit. The, the sense of urgency sort of went. Um, and then, yet it was delivered um in 2022 early on i think but there's such a big backlog of bands and and, and stuff you know? oh there's a huge backlog with bands a lot of bands have had like you said had tours cancelled but not only the backlog with bands and releases there was vinyls as well like a lot of us yeah. metalheads and the prog metal and all us we love yeah. the the physicals the vinyls and yeah. the cds still so we'll still yeah. go out and buy that so you kind of yeah. had to time it as well that you could get these releases out and everybody could get their vinyls as well and i noticed johan's busy signing cds as well yeah yeah, yeah. I saw that because he sends us a, like a personal message there because <laughs> it, Johan doesn't like enjoy signing anything. So he sends us this personal thing like, thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he was there at Nuclear Blast UK, like in the offices doing it. Um, but he's a, what a guy. He's um, great, fantastic drummer and a, and a great character. Yeah, exactly. Can you tell me a little bit about that third single, Complex, which is the latest one to come off of that? Yeah, that's... um, I think they tried to mix it up with the writers, like if Richard's... Basically, the writers silenced uh, Mom is uh, King of Nothing. And then it was a, a, one of Carl's tracks, a typical groom riff, you know what I mean? Carl groom riff. So, you know, it sort of st it gets underway at that sort of mid-tempo riffing... You know, along the lines of small dark lines and slipstream. So I think he's got this little, um, uh, what would you call it? I don't know. He's got this little potion for writing those, those sort of tracks. And people, they, they always, they always go down a storm. So why change something that's um, get a new, enough new stuff in there? You know, you've got to keep it interesting. But um, yeah, and I think there is another single. To be released as well. I think it will be released on the possibly Friday, but nice. I'm not sure. Well, we got to wait and see for that one as well. I think I was reading also that Richard was saying that with the Legends of the Shire album, that they kind of felt a little more freedom to kind of just create and expand. So, say the wings a little bit and get a little more progressive and just kind of experiment a little bit more. And it kind of continued on with this album as well. Yeah, I think you. you you can. Oh, well, do you ever want to look back? Not, no. You know, I know I did. Re I did refer to subsurface in two thousand and four, but that was only like a an example of yeah. what you've got to move forward. So if you if you've stretched to a certain degree, you've got to carry on trying to stretch, trying to stretch. Like it was never intended to be a concept album. That was decided decided pretty early on. You know, there was bantered around, did we do a sequel to Legends, but not this time round. I think everybody just wanted a break, wanted to be a more straightforward album. Carl definitely, I got the impression Carl definitely wanted to, you know, do a, a more straightforward album. Yep. Um, get out there, you know, get a bit of separation. But um, I'm, we're glad, you know, we've heard some people really enjoying it. And at the end of the day, that is why, why you do it. And if people like it and are into it, it, that will then get us our chance to get out live and visit these places and share it. I can't wait to play some new songs live. Absolutely. You know, get out and do some new stuff live.
which tracks are you looking forward to getting out there and playing live there, Glenn? Um, I don't know. That will have to be a that'll have to be a debate. Probably the, <laughs> you've got to do the singles. Yeah, you've got to do the singles because people, you know, um, then whatever. I don't yeah. know. Uh, well, you know the set put together. It's not. You know, the, they've got such a back catalogue. As I and, said earlier. Yeah, you could basically pin all their albums up to the wall, throw darts, and you'd still want me to do the two-hour set list. You know what I mean? Because the the quality of the, uh, you know, the depth of the quality of the back catalogue. But we'd have to wait and see what yep. the uh, the set actually is. Yeah. Well, speaking of the singles, I really um liked that first single that came off it as well, "Silenced," and I also liked yeah. the film clip that went along with it with a little boy running through the woods and you know he was coming up against that adversary he's kind of on the bridge and you kind of see him quiet to right at the end and he opens his voice and I just I really liked like I love that message with that about you know sometimes we're all kind of silence silent and we need to speak up sometimes to kind of break that power and that hold of whatever that adversary or foe is coming up against us yeah absolutely I think we should nailed it there um just exactly how you've just explained it. Uh, you can hold back and, and it just, everything seems to fester. Yeah. When you do that, if nothing, you, you know, if you can't express and try and have your opinion, everything just gets worse and worse and worse and worse, where it could be sorted out and discussed possibly, you know what I mean, with discussion rather than, you know, going out of control and blowing up blowing up things and then we wouldn't have so many of those dividing lines that are in the world and we're on such a good thing for a little bloody while there we're all kind of on the same page you're sitting here going look at this everyone's fucking getting along it's all going along well but yes exactly coming back to that i want to talk about the the other two tracks that i really really love i love a big epic track and i want to talk about both of them but can i talk about first the domino effect i really really dug these two longer tracks on the album just the progression in them and the journey that you go on with this song absolutely yeah yeah the the domino effect that's probably one of my favorites without a shadow of a doubt and there's always a bit of competition between Richard and Carl Wright and the longest. There's always usually two long <laughs> tracks. And I think Richard just picked Carl again to the post with the longest track, 15 <laughs> seconds left. But um, yeah, it's all about the journey, isn't it? With songs like that. You know, you start somewhere, it takes you somewhere else. You may return back to that position, but it's always up and down. The clever bits in, in the middle. I'll get to have a break. So we're definitely doing one of those live, or both of them live. I get to have a breather. Um, sometimes I play guitar. Obviously, we sort those bits out. Um, I just play a bit of second guitar for some of the solos in places. Um, but it is, it's like, a, it's like a musical journey. And, you know, the diversity of the melodies, some, sometimes they're trying in sort of an intense, a hard melody, and then you get like a really melodic melody, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. I think... I love bands that do that anyway. You know, there's some of those shouter bands that then come up with a clean chorus. It's like, whoa, man, you just eat every bit of emotion here. You know what I mean? Um, I know it's not threshold's not quite that extreme, but in a prog band, it would probably be very uh, shunned for doing anything that extreme. But um, yeah, it's a whole journey, is it? It's the up and down, you know, the unpredictability, hopefully. You're yeah. going to listen to me quite a few times. You know, it's not going to get dull, you know, and hopefully it's one of those, I haven't heard this before, you know. Yeah, well, that was it. The last couple of days diving into this album, I had those moments where I'd hear a track and you come back in here and again, and it's like going on this journey. And also the whole album for me, I always come back to a people, and I know a lot of us metalheads do it. We do listen to whole albums. I know a lot of bands get caught up in the digital streaming and, and you kind of have to. That's the way of the world. But when you put on a, a album like this, and I know it's not a concept album, but for me, I love going on journeys with a band as well. And the way it kind yeah. of started with that haunted track kind of worked your way through you know yeah. what i mean right up until that last one defense condition which was a really yeah. cool track as well can I ask about that one yeah oh, brilliant yeah that's quite uh when i heard that one that is quite epic at the end yeah it's, um, very very strong and i do agree that's where I, I use the word cohesion rather than concept everything's a great album for me all fits together you know there is 
what cohesion between the tracks, but there wasn't as a stronger concept. That's that's all I was saying. Yeah. Oh yeah, defense condition right at the end. Uh, but I'll tell you what, that was some tongue twisters singing <laughs> on that track. I think I'm going to have to get on with push bike more to get the, the breath when we if we play that one live. I'll tell you that now. So uh, yeah, and a perfect ending to the you know perfect final song. You know, finish the album. Yeah, it's a it's a really great album. Looking back on your career so far, I know you've got quite a lot of years left in you, man. But 1988 threshold have been going on for a, a long time. I know, kind of, I've come along a little bit later, but it must be great for you as a musician. Also, seeing these guys like myself, dads, mums, come along with their kids who are rocking out the threshold as well now. So I'm, this must be really excited again to get back on tour and you know meet these fans and connect with these people again. Uh, absolutely, and then. You know, you get the you get the you, you've got the newer fans. Yeah, the you've got fans from all different generations of threshold. You know what yeah. I mean? Some turn up from the psychedelic. They were coming to the psychedelic test and tour or the wounded land tour because Damien left. So that's when I joined Threshold to do the live work for Wounded Land. So, yeah. um, and you occasionally get people. Yeah, I saw you so and so in. You know, this place in, oh, I don't know, Bremen, Germany, wherever. And it's like, man, and you're here again, it's like 30 years later or whatever it is. Um, and there are others, there's kids, you know, with their ear protectors on and, and you know. Oh, fuck, I wish I'd done that when I was younger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, wasn't, it wouldn't be the same, though, when the, you know, when you get home and your ears are ringing. Yeah, I know. That tinnitus in your ear right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also, not only yeah. that, I'm having these fans all through the generations, but the bands, some of the bands you guys have influenced as well. And the prog metal scene now compared to when you started back then is absolutely unreal. You just must really enjoy kind of leaving that trademark as well on the, the scene too. Yeah, obviously... Coming back into the band, I can't claim it, you know, no, anything, no. but I think they have definitely threshold as a band. You know, I have influenced people. They've sort of stuck to the guns um, and always been threshold and into, and I think they've been praised for that. And at times, over the, you know, the the, the 90s, the 2000s, you know, I still sort of kept in touch with the, the band and, you know, listened to the, to the stuff. And I always thought they deserved more than, you know, they actually... Got, they were always seen as the you know the the underdog. I know that Dream Theatre, don't get me wrong, incredible players, but you know songwriting wise, Threshold are up there. Sometimes they're doing them in my opinion, and I've been for um, you know Light and Space. Some of the old tracks are, yeah. you know, the melodies are up and down, the music is up and down. You, you know, it takes you on a ride. And Dream Theatre are amazing. Don't get me wrong, all Dream Theatre fans. Well, and when we did support Dream Theatre back in. Can't remember the year, but it was on the waking up the world summer tour for them, and we got the chance to support them in Europe for a handful of gigs, five or six. It was one of the best experiences, yeah. uh, you know, of my you know of my career. That was at the top, fantastic. Yeah, that would have been a really, really great tour, not taking anything away from Dream Theatre, but you guys are up there as well for me in the whole prog metal scene. Like bands like Dream Theatre, Threshold yourselves, you've kind of laid the groundwork for bands to kind of come through now, like where we can play prog metal up there with, as you are saying, some of the, the real heavy stuff as well, Threshold. It's not, you know, you could sit there on one of these, some of these festivals as well with some of these big deathcore bands, no worries, and the fans would absolutely eat it up and love it just as much. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Well, that was like 70,000 tons because yeah. I mean, that was that would have been unreal. Me. And I thought, <laughs> we going, it was like the second, was it the second gig I did? The first gig was uh, Athens. And then the next one, I'm sure it was, was 70,000 tons of metal. Or oh, not far off when the first one back. And it was like, man, we're going on this. My, my biggest disappointment. <laughs> I didn't see enough bands. I mean, I got into a lot of those like Finnish bands and that after. Yep. Um, I've sort of been a bit quiet on, you know, searching stuff out and, you know, the Europe, what happened? Yeah. Europe's got a, a great scene of Scandinavia. Oh, I mean, some of the bands that come out of there, you know, Draconian and Swallow the Sun. I mean, I know it's a bit down, but when I'm in the mood to listen to that sort of stuff, I absolutely love that sort of stuff, you know what I mean? And Amorphis, that oh. um, Queen of Time album. I just couldn't stop that. Just, you know, killer. Uh, I don't think my morphous wrong, but some of these bands wrong 70,000 tons. And, and my biggest regret 
he's not getting down and and and, and watching them live. Yeah, that we so. we got seventy thousand tons. We got to book threshold again, so Glenn can go catch more bands. That's for sure. Yeah. Glenn, yeah. this has been an absolute yeah. pleasure, my friend. Everybody, the dividing lines does come out eighteenth of November through Nuclear Blast. Everybody, grab it, crank it really loud. The neighbours are going to want to hear this one as well. Glenn, do you have any last words, shout outs, thank yous, or anything else you'd like to add, my friend? Well, of course, thanks to you for inviting me along, and thanks to everyone everywhere. Get dividing lines. I'm sure you're going to absolutely love it. Thanks very much for supporting the band for all these years. Awesome. Thanks, mate. You have a lovely evening. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot, dude. Thanks, mate. Cheers, dude. Bye. Mate, hey. Fucking my man. Fucking Jobber. That fucking metal guy, motherfucker.